So, we got some movies out here. Um, a few I've seen. There it is. Good Will Hunting. Oh, Matt Damon. Great. So they were there talking about it, but those two guys got on the subject of some different pictures. It, it was a beauty of a flick. We bought both saw LA Confidential. That was a cool one. That's a perfect one. The Full Money is still out like a year. I think I saw it at Christmas like a year ago. The thing is still rolling. Now, The Big Lebowski. We gotta see the Big Lebowski. I've definitely been thinking about that. I love the Coen Brothers. Yeah, and, they, and they've got these players back that they kind of work with the same actors. They got Torturo, John Goodman. Um, they got uh, Steve Buscemi, I think, is in it. So it's like kind of the usual cast of characters will be cool. I want to see the wedding. So. All right. Oh, okay. Let's go see the wedding singer. I think that'd be like so funny. Need more coffee. Go for a repo. I think we should try for the Lebowski first. That'd be probably a good like start. I know we're both. That's at the sunset five, right? We're yeah. yeah. Looks like we, we we can pull one in about uh, half an hour from now. Let's uh let's settle our bill and get the hell out of here. Come down here by by Hollywood High and just check out the our Fairfax High. Check out the little honeys that come floating around like three o'clock. Hit me off one of those patties. Thanks, buddy. Big Lebowski. He's a film about a guy. His name's Lebowski. Friends call him Duke. 
and uh, he gets caught up in a kidnapping paper, mistaken for the big Lebowski. Another gentleman, the Lebowski. Um, basically, from that point on, the big little kidnapping paper involving the big Lebowski's wife, Bonnie Lebowski, who you never really know until at least more than halfway through the story whether she kidnapped herself or she's like this little porn bitch who is more or less a trophy wife. Dude, Lebowski. It's another, it's another classic from the Coens. I thought the film was good. Seven out of ten. You know, not a great movie. I wouldn't recommend it for everybody. But the people that dig those kind of interesting indie movies, especially a Coen Brothers type of movie that is all about kind of throwing you curveballs, odd characters, weird plot twists. It's entertaining. It definitely has a flavor. This movie has a real flavor and uh, something unlike the typical uh, bland, Hollywood variety. I mean, while the acting was like amazing, it's not so much the acting, it's the characters that were just superb. A beautiful film. I love the texture, I love the colors, I love the bowling. Yeah, the bowling is uh, obviously we love the bowling, but that's just, yeah, the characters were up and I are big bowlers. Big bowlers. The, um, just John, having John Goodman as the Vietnam vet, he's always wearing like the vest and like the shooting glasses. Lady, I got buddies who died face down in the box so that you and I can enjoy this family restaurant. Get out of here. Hey, dude, don't go away, man. Come on, this affects all of us, man. The dude's a guy who doesn't care about anything, so he can look at Goodman going, will you fucking shut up about the Vietnam? Who gives a shit? But, um, Buscemi was really actually like a, a backseat player. Like, actually, he just kind of reacted. He just was kind of there to like be told to shut the fuck up. Your feet on the news rug. Donnie, you're out of your element. I thought it was entertaining. I like. I, I thought it would be more of a, eh, than it actually was for me. Maybe that's because I walked into it expecting um, a really popular name to pull off uh, less than amazing. I think I came from the opposite point of view. I had great expectations for this movie. <laughs> Why don't you just stay here? Woo! Wee! Luckily, we got a cool dude there. If that, if that isn't one for the camera, I don't know what is. <laughs> Man, now that's, you know, that, that comes right out of the Big Lebowski. They had car wrecks and shit going on the whole time. Like when he dropped his roach in his, in his pants and they like, swerved over and like nailed the dumpster. <laughs> Typical uh, Cohen Brothers players is John Turturro. And he shows up in this one as like the slime ball child molesting dude named Jesus. So like, well, what does that mean to you? The, the old, I mean, that character is fun, colorful, really great uh, opening, and then nothing. Like, yeah. who was he, what happened, right. why, so, that, so what? I thought, they I, give you an introduction into his life and who he is, and then nothing. I, see, I, I felt like you got a guy like that in the movie, especially with the name Jesus. It's got to go somewhere. characters like struck me as kind of odd we had the, we had the, the new the new feminine painter there were quite a few things actually that, that didn't really go anywhere and, and i think should have like you know, her for example i mean maude right or Mar Mar what was her name Who cares? yeah you know and I, I bet it shocked us up to the writing frankly because all the actors in this story were really giving it their all they're really like pushing as hard as they could and they're all experienced actors i mean julianne moore we know was in boogie nights did a great job of that torturo and goodman and bitch i mean all these guys have done great jobs but they just had these characters that with, with the exception of Bridges and I'd say Goodman, all the other characters felt underdeveloped to me. Yeah. yeah. But there were so many of these characters, you felt like, and they were like positioned in ways that like that they, you wanted them to go somewhere and they just never did. And that's the biggest example of Torturo. <laughs> <laughs> the more we talk about it, I'm not so sure I like the film. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it just feels it feels like half baked. It's like they had a great idea with some like characters, but they they never had the body of the thing. It's like uh, it's like all, all uh, frosting and no cake. Or you know, it's, it doesn't seem to have the. It's missing the. It's missing its heart. It sucked. It was terrible. This movie bit the big one. <laughs> I hated this movie. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, where is it at? Where is it at? Yes. Surely. My fave. I got the Lewinsky. I got the Lewinsky. I got the big Lewinsky right here. I was thinking we try this again with the hush. I mean, see, see what happens. You see what oh, we, we had to run out to our car. Yeah, I mean it's a movie theater. I think I figured we could we could pull one over on this guy. Let's give it a try. Okay. We got 15 minutes till the wedding singer. So I say we go down there, check out the joint, get some good seats. So uh, we're gonna see the wedding singer. Adam Sandler, Drew Barrymore. 80s haircut, cheap candy. Trip down memory lane. Check it out. Just out what we expected. Yep. The Wedding Singer is a film about uh, Adam Sandler, who plays the wedding singer, and he gets left standing at the altar. And uh, in the midst of uh, depression, he falls in love with Drew Barrymore. Yeah, we got a love story. We got sophomore humor. Basically, you know, <laughs> we got like an Adam Sandler stand up comedy with a predictable love story, but it works. It's fun. You believe that they like each other. The right one. I, I always just envisioned the right one being someone I could see myself growing old with. Yeah. And Glenn would be a really good looking older man. Like Blake Harrington. I'm gonna probably look like Buddy Hackett. <laughs> I had no problems with the film. I thought it was fun. I thought it was cute. I thought it was, uh, you know, there was no, nothing, there was nothing offensive about it. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was really worried about being offended by this <laughs> Losing his mind. And I'm reaping all the benefits. Yeah, um, got cool cameos, nostalgic music, and fashion. Yeah. You get what you pay for. It's fun for everybody. You know, there's always stuff to point to and talk about and go, hey, remember when that when that happened? Remember that song when you played that at your birthday party back in 1984? I liked it. I want to say it's worth the two hours. <laughs> it's worth the two hours and the seven bucks. Do you really want to <laughs> me? Do you really want to make me cry? Do you really want to hurt me? They deftly maneuver and muscle for rank. Fuel burning fast on an empty tank. Let's figure out how we're going to cap this night off. We, got a, we, had, a, we had an offbeat movie, a good comedy. We're looking for, we're looking for number three here. What's it going to be? I think I'm like the last person on Earth that I've seen, I've yet to see. I think it's at 1030 over there. Let's just go over there and, and jump in on that. Well, okay, Rob. Get a little uh, three and a half hours of uh, oceanic adventure. All right. All right, man. I was uh, I was pretty attentive for that one. Almost three and a half hours of uh, the Titanic. And I'll tell you something. It's about a ship that sinks. Yeah. <laughs> a film about a boat 
Dungeons and Snakes, uh, come through fall in love and don't live happily ever after. Exactly. But their spirit lives on happily ever after. Their spirit lives on. And but they threw this love story on top of it. I guess it's relevant. It's kind of, uh... Relevant? How is it relevant? Well, it was irrelevant. You're right. It's not relevant at all. <laughs> they wanted to do a story about the sh a ship sinking, and they had to make it they had to make it plausible and sellable to like the public. So they like tied in this like teenage love story. It was one of those films that I didn't want to like, but I actually I actually enjoyed it. I thought I thought the acting was ridiculous, like that old woman. Yeah, what was she's uh, getting all kinds of awards for that nowadays. Yeah, she was a real Titanic survivor, wasn't she? I mean, isn't that what it's all well, about? Well, she's I mean, supposed to be. I like don't some crazy woman that they threw in the film. Half of the line ridiculously delivered was so dramatic, right. you know, especially like I thought the Beyonce. What was it? Like? Kate Winslet, is she a babe? She's all right. Is she a babe or is she not a babe? I couldn't tell. I was back and forth the whole movie. You know, I was kind of like into it. I was trying to like, you know, put myself in the place of Leonardo. What are you doing a good like? Uh, Leonardo uh, DiCaprio is a great actor, but I... I think he carried the role, gotta, okay. Yeah, I didn't think so at all. He's like the skinny little white boy who grew up in Hollywood, and he's supposed to be this 25-year-old artist that's seen the world. I didn't buy it at all. Well, she, and everything was just so obvious, and so, oh, she grew up in this rich home, yet, and, and she's so proper, yet she's got a got a heart just you know and a, and a soul just waiting to blossom and he is this this guy who's had nothing and, but he's got the and, soul and he's got the soul and he's seen the world and together you know anything can be accomplished it was kind of like a nice little uh root for the underdog thing there and i i think i generally bought it you know he, he looks like a guy that was flying by the seat of his pants it was fun to watch it was big it was, it was gorgeous it was uh it was riveting, it took you along, you were excited to watch it, but at the same time it was pretty implausible and, and kind of ridiculous at times. Mm -hmm. um, this, you know, the scope of the film certainly made it worth watching. Uh, what, what, what do you think about the graph? What do you think about the uh, imagery? Special effects, computer graphics, the large-scale Titanic that they apparently built half of it, or half of it at 80%, I think, is the story. It looks good. It looks good. I mean, they did, like, flyover shots of the full Titanic, Titanic steaming through the ocean. They look good. I mean, people all over the deck, good light, look real. To Hollywood Lane. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah.